Okay, good morning traders and welcome to this live intraday strategy webinar on SB Trade Desk. Today is Thursday, September 12th, ECB day. Uh, Mike with you on the, uh, Michael Boutros with you on the mic guys this morning. Good to be with you. Aurelian, Jay, Peter, Pete's in the room, Trevor's in the room. Great to see you guys uh, this morning. So we're seeing a bit of a dollar um, rally, basically a euro spill as the ECB marks essentially the continuation or the acceleration of um, of easing in Europe, ne ne uh, rates going negative, uh, tough stance, but uh, that's what they're looking at and Euro taking it on the chin. We're still at a big level. So I wanna get through this pretty uh, quickly as um, more headlines continue to come out here. On the, on the menu for today, DXY, Euro, Aussie, Swissy, Gold, and SPX from last night's update. We'll circle back and hit Sterling. Uh, dollar yen uh, crude I do want to take a look at we haven't covered that in a couple of days uh, and Kiwi and CAD both also still way up there on the menu but really not much for uh, need for updates because they're moving pretty clean so real quick uh, DXY I mean this is the level we looked at last night to the weekly chart first I just want to recall again bring your attention to this slope keep a dead eye on this uh, into the close of the month of the week so I mean, we're there again, okay? We're there again. This slope has called essentially every single high. The intro week highs have been called by this slope. And you can see that when we bring back, um, you know, the candlesticks. But the point being is we're right back at this provocative slope that has been such a huge impact uh, for the DXY and for the year on the downside. I'll show you that in a moment as well. And again, momentum trigger still pending. We thought this was going to be a bigger reversal last week. So this is basically, it's, we're coming into the high closes. Things got to hold here if this is going to work or if the dollar is still heading lower. Here's the daily chart. High day close comes in 98, uh, 9, 96, just a bit higher. I think we turned just ahead of that. 98.94 was the high we just registered. Um, that's the high day reversal close. Beyond that, we could go right back into that slope. So things are super, super interesting right here. As I said yesterday in the update, things are kind of stretched. They have been. Um, here's the dollar. Here's the dollar last night. Level and focus is a big range, 98.83 into 98.94. That's a longer dated uh, 618 extension. This is the near-term 618 retracement just of this drop in the September high, so the entire September range. By the way, that retracement does not take into account that bad tick, which somehow came after markets closed, and this bad tick, which was sort of an overnight phenomena. So we're just working with this range. 618 is being compromised right now. So watch this zone. It should be an inflection. If we get through it, you might see this thing accelerate. If it fails, this would be the spot. Um, as far as data is concerned, as far as the levels are concerned, you know, that you're not really looking at much. Um, CPI data is out and done. Okay, and oh, by the way, the CPI data did just come out. The core came in at 2.4, which beat the 2.3 expectation. Um, you saw a slip in the year on year from 1.8 to 1.3, but again, the core month on month also built. So it's kind of a wash. It's not really much of an argument for the uh, for the inflation calls. Um, hey, man, great to see you. Good morning. So, you know, this is it. This is it. If we pop through this, you're looking at a stab of the highs. Again, the 1618 of the longer stance is 99.50, but um, I'm very weary here to try playing this. Here's Euro, and here's what Euro looked like last night, right ahead of the ECB. It had dropped into a really nice spot, this 109.86, 10990 uh, level. It's the September open, objective monthly open. It's the 618 of the September range. Nice Fibonacci consideration. And we were looking for a topside breach of this slope to essentially suggest you got that next leg higher. Well, here's what just happened. ECB comes out. Markets are, markets are pretty much expecting what Jaragi is going to do but a little bit more aggressive on the easing stance. You saw that spike go right back into what level? 1066, the objective opening range high, that level that we looked at 
from the drop in, in uh, August, which converged on slope into the start of the week. It's exactly what the opening range high peaked at. That's exactly where we just rammed into, and a reversal slams us lower. So look, you made it through the low day close. You made it through the 786 retracement. At this point, the low is coming at 109.26. Beyond that, it's all slope until you get down for a while. There's really nothing to catch this thing if we break that 109.26 level. You're looking at like 108.15, 108.21. If it comes ahead of hand, maybe the lower parallel. But for me, it's going to be all about the U.S. Open, guys. This whole thing could retract and we'll get back above 109.70 ahead of the U.S. Open. That would change everything. That would change everything. So my point being, don't chase. If you're looking for an opportunity or if you're holding shorts, you're basically bringing down your stop down to 109.90 or above. Um, if we get more stabilized below 109.60, then drop it to 109.70 under low day close. But that's where I just start to bring down the stops for sure. Next limit would be somewhere around that 109.26 level. Uh, for new opportunities, if you know there's really nothing to do, jump in fresh here. Unless it recovers, U.S. Open stabilizes and European markets close with a hold above um, the low day close. If that happens, I would dismiss this whole thing as noise. So. Keep in mind, we still have, again, the, the closes for the week are going to be critical here. Here's DXY at that slope. Here's Euro at its slope support, right? This slope has yet to be compromised. We checked well below it last week and closed above. Here's what, this, what the line chart looks like. So we haven't really invalidated it. This is going to be the push. If this doesn't close below this slope, you're still at risk for, an ex for, for exhaustion. If it does, this is the accelerated move. We'd expect to see again into the 109, into the 108s, um, deep into the 108s. If this uh, starts to accelerate, or we get material closes below these these, these parallels, really huge, really huge. So beware on euro. Here's euro on the daily chart. There's that downslope. Here's a, a 618, <clears throat> which caught the highs. Here's the drop at the lows. Here's the close, failure to close on that slope. Perfect rebound, right? Here's the pop higher. It's all about what we do around here. Questions on Euro or the implications of where we are right here. This is make or break time. Draghi sees persistence of prominent downside risks providing substantial monetary stimulus. Forecasts show lower inflation. Draghi sees muted inflationary pressure. So he's padding it for the room. Uh, for room of or for or leaving the door open, excuse me, for the room uh, for more easing possible. ECB providing substantial monetary stimulus. Okay, so we'll continue to get these headlines coming through as Draghi speaks. He says need a highly accommodative stance for a prolonged period. Wow, ECB ready to adjust all instruments as needed. Robust employment underpin economic resilience. Wow. All right. So yeah, they're he they're aggressively dovish here. Oh, Mr. Draghi. Okay. So we'll continue to monitor this, guys. And the other one that I just want to segue to really quick, it wasn't on the menu, guys, or anything I presented, but we went over it here in the webinar. This thing has been insane. Uh, this is Euro Yen. We're already posted an outside uh, candle on the advance that we just made here today. Uh, the intraday chart. Well, first of all, the long-term chart's ridiculous too. Here's the day, uh, the daily. Look at this pitchfork off the highs. Boom, boom. It's been ping pong in between these levels, like no one's business. False break of the lows. Here's the 50, uh, the 75% line. I thought you're going to get a deeper stretch towards the upper parallel, but it doesn't matter what I think. Here's the reversal, taking us back below the median line, and this thing has just been textbook, right? Reversal ahead of 16 momentum, really bearish. Here's the intraday chart. This is a pitchfork I showed you guys, I think maybe like a week and a half ago. Um, 
when we came off of slope support saying, wow, if this holds, that'd be pretty impressive. This is another pitchfork here. A little bit more appropriate for the near-term picture. There's the breach. If this was in play, this would be your first level of a bounce. You look for failure again, and you look for a drop into the lower parallel. So it's been a sneaky little uh, setup that we haven't really been paying attention to, but uh, this also constitutes a test and a push through the objective weekly range lows. So if you get that drop sub, uh, 117.57 is what I had on the level there just as an eye like support, but even higher. This is the month, the uh, weekly open as well as the weekly opening range lows, this whole zone. So again, if things materialize, U.S. open, uh, you know, objectively comes online and pushes this deeper, then you're essentially looking for a reversal pattern right off the bat. So a little sneaker there for uh, Euro Yen. Let me put that on the list. All right. Um, Aussie, number four. So, um, <clears throat> as I noted in yesterday's piece, I've been reluctant to do, what's the word? I can't get comfortable, I think is what I said, with doing uh, or getting involved in a long side trade until we get something, okay? It's, look, it, maybe that's just my feeling, my angst, but at the end of the day, 68.27, 68.55 was such a huge region. Pivot here, pivot here. We plowed through it you know, stalled, and now we're kind of just drifting. Um, maybe a deeper test back into like 68.27 for the bottom end of that range. Something needs me, needs to make me comfortable uh, to get a decent low that you're trading against. It's just, what are you, what are you doing here? You're, you're going to get long at like a 10-day stretch. It hasn't been 10 days, but you get the picture, right? We did have like five or six here. One day pause this is almost a doji, okay? Yesterday, again almost doji type status and today we pushed to a new high but here we are again this same zone now there's nothing to say that this thing can't keep going we were thinking the same thing on this way down looking for some sort of correction to get back in never got it so on this one we have to just wait for a new term price action to give us some clarity momentum's testing 60 60 break this morning um you know 60 the level that we like to cite but you can see those peaks somewhere near 62 here in momentum for the last couple of advances. Point being, you know, if it pushes through, you're you're at 69, 69.27 in no time. Um, and it's just kind of just slow grind or higher. I still need the reset. Here's what the intraday chart looks like. And here's what it looked like last night. We were testing a high, didn't really believe that high last night. It actually ended up being a decent short if anyone tried to press that once it failed. You got right back, just turned pips from the low we closed from 2016, the bottom end of that range uh, that we were talking about for so long. Here's the rally again overnight. I mean, what do you do with that? What do you do with that? I'm still inclined to think this thing jerks lower, especially dollar here testing the high. If that plows through, this is kind of my primary candidate um, for a pullback. Weekly open support comes in at 68.40. Okay, it's a good 40 some odd pips from where you are now almost. Um, and then more importantly, this 38.2, you do need to adjust to that new high. So from last night's update, just a quick shift there brings that up just higher above that 68 handle. So not much of a change, but it's just been a slow grinder. If anything, could be a near-term flag formation, could be a near-term champ. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can interpret this, right? Looks pretty clean for for a play like that. In which case, you're still looking for sort of this pivot near 68.55 almost. It's just 10 pips away from the weekly open. So, you know, plays you see fit. But the ideal scenario is that it jerks lower first, maybe a lower parallel. This would still be just a weekly opening range low tag but more appropriately would be kind of a deeper cut towards the lower parallel, figure out what happens there, especially with the dollar kind of ripping through everyone's face now. So that's my take on Aussie. 
any questions there? The only other thing for the dollar, by the way, I didn't mention is tomorrow you do was the last print for the week. It's like a retail sales or something. Advanced retail sales, yeah, tomorrow. Um, you know, could offer a little bit of a bump. We'll see. Uh, ECB lowers all inflation forecasts, sees 2021 at 1.5%. So even a year and a half out, let's say, they're still calling for an under uh, undershoot of the 2% inflation target at 1.5. Draghi urges more growth-friendly public finances, mild expansionary fiscal stance, giving some support. Urges government to raise long-term growth potential. All right, these are all fluff comments. But anyway, I think the damage is done here. Questions on Aussie? Okay, we still have a long list. Uh, Dollar Swiss. It's been a decent play. Um, from last night, the whole focus was this resistance zone. We pulled back, okay? It was a nice drop, but it held right at the lower parallels. A nice 30, 30, 30 some odd pip run. Um, but look what just happened. Obviously, this is ECB inspired, so the reversal you're getting now is just once again testing the range. The range was 30, uh, 9931 into 9940, uh, 8.51, this zone right here. Decent pivot in price from back uh, in, the, in the July opening range high, but it's just the 50% of the drop from April, okay? And this slope has been super nice. So not out of the woods yet. If it closes even, uh, you know, a two hour or an hourly, you're, all, you're already starting to mark divergence on this uh, on this push. See what happens at 9.950 into the open of U.S. trade. If it pops higher, you likely see an accelerated move because it would be a breach of uptrend slope. Um, in which case you're looking for like 99.90s. You're looking for that for that key 618 uh, right above parity. So uh interesting move again i was inclined to play this short yesterday here's the bounce off uh slope which held this is still at resistance same justification that you would have taken yesterday is here only this acceleration needs to basically fail into the u.s open so 9 30 10 30 kind of failure would work um if it solidifies the second push or finally breaks through Look out! Look out for a much sharper rally. Here's the daily chart. So let's just drop this hundred. This is first of all, we haven't gotten a daily close above it. I want to keep that in focus here. It's 99.30. That's the 100% extension. But let's just, for clarity, focus on this. interesting setup on all time frames here's dollar swiss on the weekly chart look at the slope that we're breaking here from the 2018 2019 highs it's a provocative thursday in mid-september who knew <laughs> don't chase these guys we're the point is if you're not in a long at this point there's nothing to do on the long side unless we get some sort of reversion, some sort of pullback. Okay, any questions on Aussie? <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. gold this thing so the drawdown was beautiful uh until today until this started to rip it broke uptrend resistant uh downtrend resistance it broke the weekly open we're now checking the monthly open here's gold on the weekly chart real quick before we get into the intraday just want to highlight the critical zone we've been talking about for months 1522 1526 still have not gotten a weekly close above that the stretch okay of the intra-week spikes failed at our secondary target at 1557 and then we posted a big old reversal candle last week or a big old outside candle excuse me last week took us way lower okay and then here's 
price testing this zone again. This is a critical moment for gold as well. If we pivot back above, when we finally get a breach above 1526, we're looking for 1586 eventually. But this was the first pivot. This was the first sort of weekly support zone. Didn't get quite that low. Okay, watch this. We're still in overbought condition on the weekly chart. The momentum's still on the side of the bulls, but if it's gonna fail, it has to hold here, 1526. 1522. Here's the daily chart. 1526, 1522 is not only those major pivots that we were following from the late 2011 low, the 2012 low, okay? It's also the monthly open now. So again, highlighting the critical nature of this zone. It was last month's close, huge pivot in price. There's the bounce, breakthrough, accelerated, check that his resistance move lower. There was that low basic slope support, didn't quite get it. It's 1480, essentially 1479. Here's the first test of monthly open resistance in this same zone. Do or die, do or die. That month, that multi-month support trigger and momentum gave out. It closed below. This has got to hold. <clears throat> Excuse me, losing my voice already. Uh, this is not. This has got to hold if if there's further downside in gold. Here's the intraday chart. And I do kind of favor a short off this region, to be honest with you. Here, here's what it looks like. <clears throat> so high, low, high, nice pitchfork. We adjusted it a little bit. Highlighted this last night. Here's dollar Swiss. Again, no change to those levels. Remember, just breaking those highs. We're checking to break those highs. Here's gold. So this ma this major support target, this was also our sort of near-term bullish inbound. If we held below this, we want to favor that push into 1480. 1479 is going to be the 50% retracement of the advance. Um, these were swing lows. It was a 38.2. Really nice zone. It was support early in the week. We broke below. It tested as resistance. Slope held support. Again, resistance, uh, two-hour reversal candle, uh, outside reversal candle, still looked like it wanted to push lower. Well, there wasn't much left in it. Sizzled back, and as I said, if we pop through it, you probably see an accelerated run. It's exactly what happened when we popped, pushed through the weekly open. Here's resistance. I still think we have to treat this. Um, I how do I say this in words that are makes sense. I still think guys we're still in the in the confines of the near term downtrend. You know, even if it pushes a little bit higher, okay, cool. Why? What makes me think that? Well, first of all, this is the first kind of break of support, test as resistance. 101, technical analysis 101. Here's a step back, right, of the slope which has been very fruitful at the median line, very fruitful at the upper parallel, okay? Little messy there, but both breaks saw accelerations and retests. Here's the break of support. Here's our first test of that zone is resistance. The slope converges on that same zone, 1522, 1526. It's insane. Um, so I, you know, I don't want to be stubborn, but I still think that there's, you know, push uh, possibly lower. Uh, Iman says, I did already. 1422. Cheers, Michael. Sorry, 1522. Right. Okay, 1522. Uh, gutsy play. I love it, Iman. It's, that's the way it should have been played within that 1522, 1526 zone. You got a tight stop. You know where it's going to, if it breaks and ruptures 26, it's probably going to rally right near that 618. Uh, that would be a move into this zone. Okay. That's your next upside target. So you have really clear what happens if you're wrong. And basically a 1507 break, Iman, just my humble opinion, if you get back through the weekly open, you get back through that median line, at that point you can probably bring your stop even back down to the previous opening range highs and kind of play protective until we get uh, a deeper cut. But listen, there was a, some central bank interest rates decisions are always fun, right? They very rarely change or shift per se, near-term trend, even if the broader thing's gonna change, it's gonna whipsaw, clear out the shorts, clear out the longs, then start to make a move. So 
watch the U.S. Open. Watch the U.S. Open. Not something I would get too aggressive with, but if that if there was going to play, I'd have to wake up this morning and see something like this. And I have a, I'm looking for that's how I would have how I would have looked to play it. Look for 1507, Eman. You got to get through that. You got to get back below the weekly open if this is going to mark a bigger high. If it starts to drift back higher, you know, break even stop or even just above 1526, if you want to try to call it, um, would be prudent. But we don't quite have the justification yet, and it is an overbought territory. That's not necessarily a good thing. So let's see how this plays out. Yeah, I've got a couple of triggers here that are looking pretty good. Ideal scenario is a 1480, even a little deeper towards 1460 uh, before we start to mark resumption. Gold's listen, gold's in a is a, is in a, is in a broad uptrend. No one's arguing that, um, but the trend is mature. It has been both from a momentum standpoint. We've now peaked and went higher than the highest momentum reading. Um, you know, registered uh, at the high when we made the record high in 2011. So we're it's extremes, okay? And we're at slope resistance. We're at lateral resistance. There is a lot to look at here. So if something was going to interrupt this massive opening range yearly breakout, uh, this would be the spot. And certainly over the last four weeks, it's exactly what's been happening. Iman says, you're right about the bank decision. Yeah, I mean, I just, for me, it's... If I'm in a position, I won't let it shake me out, but to get into a new one, I usually let the dust settle for a little bit because there's always nonsense, right? There's always nonsense. And you never know what these jerks are going to say, what kind of thing they're going to try to throw out there. And obviously, guys, remember, at all costs, it is in his best in, uh, you know, interests for the Euros to get weaker and weaker and weaker. It's, it's in all their best interests and sort of a race for the bottom with all these global central banks. So you know, intended consequences are, are, are materializing, but does that last? You know, at some point, the DX, the dollar is just going to cough it up. Let's see if this lasts. All right. Any questions on gold? We all clear on this one. Six. Uh, Pete, we're going to hit the SPX early for you, sir. Uh, here's the SPX uh, from last night's update, and here's where we are now. So this thing has been super clear. Um, we talked about this 2980, uh, 2982, is it? Oh, 2978, 2982 region, right into the close of last week. There was resistance. We closed in there. We popped through this, and on Tuesday's webinar, we were talking about it. Not really feeling right. If it was a breach, we would have wanted to see something like this, which is what we saw yesterday. So in any event, the opening of the week failed. You saw a push lower. May high at 29.60 was the first level that we talked about, uh, Pete, last Tuesday, or uh, Tuesday rather. Uh, that held with a nice bounce, went right back into it. And we did get the break and acceleration yesterday through the opening range highs. And really validating a break above this uh, 2978, 2982 level. So look, I still think it's got the risk. It's going to push towards that record high day close, if not the record high. So that's 3020. It's 3026. Uh, and beyond that, Pete, we're all slope, man. There's nothing. To do, there's no lateral levels to work with. There's no uh, historic data to compare to. He says, yeah, but that nonsense noise sometimes gives us a tempting price. Eman sure does. You just got to be ready on the trigger, right? My when, when I say those comments, I'm talking to the 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 people who have that instinct to kind of chase the move. Oh, so Joggy's doing this, so Euro lower. Okay, so so sell. It's not just about you know taking a guess on the direction. There's got to be a setup there. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So, um, any questions on this, Pete? Like. I, ideal scenario again this is like mike what's your fairy tale my fairy tale would be again a move a move into those highs register a new high spike into it uh get a, a tag of channel resistance if not a breach there and then a pullback if we pull back and close the day back below this 
that's your short. That's your indication to look for a uh, for a move. Yeah, I think at this point, Pete, it's gonna like at least test the the high day close. And again, or the the record high is just six six points away, but you're up here. There's really you know, I, I still think it, it looks for the tag. It's too close. If it fails, okay, um, and we never even make the tag, I'm kind of stickler. I love to see the actual probes. If it doesn't, you know the same levels. Nothing changes on this. Nothing changes. 29.82, 29.78 now becomes near-term support. Kick this out to the end of the week. And 29.60, 29.59, the same level that we talked about as a pullback support in the early in the week. That's still a level of interest, okay? And that uh, comes in at the objective weekly opening range low. So a break below this would objectively turn you bearish anyway. So the levels are like exactly the same. Um, let's take a deeper look here real quick. Yeah, I mean, it's just it hasn't broken any upslope support yet. So even on a near-term turn like this, Pete, if I was going to try to stab this lower or try to play this short, I would need something of upslope broken. I don't care if it's on like a 10-minute try. I need to see something broken um, or at least a probe into a major resistance. So this is neither a major resistance. Again, now we're working with you know record highs and very – uncharted territory so you have to treat it as a different animal obviously but on a trade like this if you're going to try to fight it i would need i'd need something broken there's not any upslope whatsoever that you can look at this and say okay at least we broke this right so yeah look for the fake out look for the for the push higher yeah that, that never even held And then the failure would be my ideal scenario. Peter, does that make sense? He says, that's great. Thank you. Hey, you're more than welcome, sir. Uh, and the other reason, I'm sorry, just to keep rambling on this, but the one other thing, Peter, I would say, if I, I always, when you guys ask me stuff like that, I always try to take a step back and look object as objectively as I can. What That's why... You know, you never hear us talk about our personal trading. Just leave that out as objective as I as I can. And I look at something like this. Well, the opening range, the objective opening range broke to the upside. So let's just say we're playing this on a weak standard, right? Um, you know, Monday, Tuesday, set a low. You're good. Wednesday, you're kind of sitting there. Here's the Thursday breach or the Wednesday breach that fails. Um, you know, early ahead of the Thursday trade session, maybe. I'd rather see this try to actually probe a high on Thursday in U.S. trade, uh, and then even if it was an opening range break to the upside, that would at least satisfy that objective price analysis. Um, so before I try to fight this, eh, there better be something upslope broken. All right, so look for a test of those highs in SPX. Any questions on that? Plus the CPI data, you know, today I think was a moot point. Neither too weak on one front, neither too strong on the other front, although core is what they'll be more important. But remember, the Fed's favored inflationary measure is not CPI, it's PCE, the personal consumption expenditure. That's what they're looking at, and specifically the core, uh, you know, stripping out food and energy of the personal consumption expenditure. That's what they're looking for when they're targeting their inflationary measures. That's kind of the the major metric that they uh, like to look at. So Draghi says ECB has QE headroom for quite a long time. Wow, this guy is just patting the hell out of this. So let's <laughs> good old Draghi. All right. 
Let's move on. This Euro might be a decent fade if this thing pops back through that low day close, but we'll we'll take that as we get it. All right, so um, Sterling, 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 Sterling. I've been stalking this thing for a short. It's finally panning out. It's been hell waiting in this thing, just doing nothing. But it was such a just a clean, clean objective range to trade against. Look, Sterling on the weekly. Sorry to go back and forth. Here's Sterling chart. Yes, we made a massive outside reversal candle off a fresh yearly low. That's as constructive as it gets. Nice bounce in price. The rally was coming into the first major pivot zone that we were talking about, and that was 23.74 into 24.33. This is a weekly stance, right? Note that the median line for the pitchfork is right in there as well. Uh, the January lows comes right in that zone as well. Decent pivot here, right? 2017 low week close, 2016 low week close. So that's the post-Brexit low week close. Just a nice zone. So looking for some sort of pullback just on the on the weekly standpoint, right? Daily chart had nothing but uh, that July low. Nice swing low there. We rallied right into it. We posted an outside daily reversal higher. And I always tell you guys, I love those trades sometimes because where people are getting excessively bullish, it can actually be a nice exhaustion candle. An outside day reversal higher at the lows has much more implications than an outside day reversal higher at the highs, right? Just as an outside day reversal here at the highs has much more implications than something like that happening you know, at the lows. So <clears throat> ever since we did that one candle on the ninth, uh, we've been inside that singular day range. Here's the 10th, here's the 11th, and here we are today. So objectively, you know, we're looking for a range break of that, which is also constituting now the weekly opening range. So just an objective look on the daily chart. Well, we're not out of the woods yet. Um, you know, we still haven't even tested the bottom side of that range after three days. Let's see what happens. Here's Sterling on the intraday. So add on top of all that, that former swing low, that major, major longer term post-Brexit low we close on the weekly charts. Take a look at the intraday, and it also had us at near-term upslope resistance. Here's the pitchfork off the lows from August. That's late August high. This month's low. There's a tag of the upper parallel right early in the week, and that's the singular range that constitutes still the weekly opening range, right? It's just that one-day stretch. So it looked pretty decent, right? For a short, it just never actually started to materialize, never started to accelerate, it took forever. Here's the final break below the 123.10. I hope this has some legs on it. Um, not something, again, I would get too aggressive on, but first target, let's just look to see this close right here for that candle wick. Uh, it's like 2260s. This is the big support level. It's at the objective weekly opening range low. That would be also a basic 38.2 of the advance. And lo and behold, the median line for the pitchfork we're currently in that caught resistance comes in right there as well, uh, basically into the close of U.S. trade, open of Asia tonight. Don't know if we get down there, but that's kind of the pivot zone you need to look. Now, if we do get there, limits, I'd probably clear off majority of the position, maybe leave a tiny bit on, stop at uh, weekly open resistance, and then we'll look to see, oh, by the way, I don't like to use the weekly open on the IDC charts because it, it's a, the open register is different from most um, <clears throat> from most brokers. Uh, but it's the only data that goes back, uh, you know, way back into the 80s. So keep that in mind. But 122.22, 122.31, that's the zone to look for. Initial support, you know, your weekly open might look different. Um, let's just, you know, let's see what FXCM has as a weekly open, 22.76.
Okay, they have it at 2267. All right. So for what it's worth. Work with that close. Same so same level. Bear with me, I just want to see what this looks like. Could also be at play here. Watch this one again. U.S. Open is on tap in just 15 minutes. Um, I'd want to see this start to kick. Watch this um watch this slope. I would say you know, we don't want I use these sparingly. Obviously, I'm just going into the trader mentality here, right? Just letting you know how I would look at this near term. Um if it starts to break back above 2310 or if it clears this slope, uh, you'd think of this as possibly a flag scenario, right? Which would see a new high if we break. And we are constructive sterling. Uh, we're just looking for the pullback here. So watch that. Watch that. Anyway, downside targets would be further highlighted. Whoops. Would be further highlighted like here. Uh, here. And again, watch for resistance there if it does start to rip. A little closer look there at, uh, at sterling. Questions, comments on pound. Next upside targets, 2438, by the way, if we clear this. Just putting things there. Number eight. All right, dollar yen. So what to do with the abomination? It's starting to act up again, or is it? This is a big spot. We were talking about this zone. It was ripping higher. Um, you know, earlier, thought it was going to clear this thing and start to massacre people, but... Let me take you back to the weekly chart. Here's dollar yen on the longer term. Um, basic slope, right, on the weekly chart, right off the highs. We've cleared the 38.2, not on a weekly close, but I kind of want to scratch that and just keep your eye on that slope. So even on the longer term picture, we we rebounded off of a beautiful spot. Um, and this would be the first parallel of that on the upside. Daily chart. Here's the pitchfork we've been following. Dollar yen doesn't typically sit in these things this clean for this long, so it was really impressive. The lows were really impressive. Even on that lower spike, we closed at the parallel. Here's the median line break, massive acceleration. First target's 107.47. We talked about that last week. Second level was 107.84, and this was where I was looking for failure. It started ripping higher. It was above 108, and I was like, what the hell is going on here? It just kept on going. So subtleties why we leave these things on sometimes right basic slope support here's the not last dollar yen update covered pound levels are unchanged well you can even take a look back to the first the previous update beyond that to get the weekly chart or the daily chart there it was 107.84 there was that slope right look where it just peaked can't make this stuff up. 2017 low day close has still to be invalidated on a daily close basis. Here's the kickback. Now, look, I don't know if this is going to fail here. All I know is that we're at slope resistance. 
we're at a yearly low day close. Momentum is at 60, testing those same highs we've been making every time. It's a big spot for dollar yen. It's a big spot for dollar yen. So nice climb, nice advance, first level of, or the major trend resistance for the downtrend since the yearly start. Uh, and last uh, night, it looked like it was peaking through that 107.47 uh, level. Next target again was 107.83, and that's where, you know, I took, you know, I would have taken everything off the cards, right? Everything off the table. That's done. Here's what it looks like. Hope no one got faked out on that. Pop through. It lasted for a few hours, okay, a few sessions, if it, if you, if you will, across the globe, and then here's the return and pullback. First level support. Former resistance 107.47. Uh, I'm super sorry, 107.47, 107.45. Nice pivot zone. Okay, gotta watch it. Gotta watch it. If this is a failure of the median line or pushing lower, you'd look for failure on any advances below 108, essentially, ideally 107.83, but let's just say 108 here. And then this is the pivot that would turn your back, uh, your turn your attention essentially back down to the uh, to the lower parallels. But dollar yen, what a move! She's a trickster, trickster. This one. Uh, let me just look what this looks like real quick. Ooh, let's sprinkle some salt on that. 107.97 turns out to be the exact hundred off the low. Corrective or not, that would be the resistance. I look for on any stretch if we are heading lower. If this pops, uh, there's real. I got nothing until 109.35. Okay, so 109 handle actually converges pretty decent. Um, you know, on that 75% line, let's call it. If we pop higher, but this is the real big one. It'd be that 109.35 level. So the levels are mapped out really clear. Uh, we loved the breakout here. These were the last two targets that we were talking about. If we breach from here, guys, it's likely to be an accelerated move. Um, if we fail, again, 107.47 and then this zone here, basically let's say those former swing highs uh, from the August open, and that level near 107, just above 107 will be the next zone of interest uh, to the downside. Any questions on dollar yen? All right. Um, let me circle back to crude afterwards. Uh, let me just hit Kiwi and Dollar Cad first. So here's number ten, um, New Zealand. Still holding, okay, the objective monthly, uh, not monthly, weekly opening range. Here's what Kiwi looked like. So we highlighted this on the, on the ninth, early in the week. Um, you know, wasn't that resistance? Wasn't that near-term support? And I was looking for either a stretch and rip here to fade it, or if this was just kind of a pivot below the parallel and hits the you know former lows that we made on Thursday, Friday last week. That pivot, that that trend line, which was a decent pivot on the way up, might be a decent area to look for the resumption. This was a big reversal here. Um, you're not really getting it. You're not really getting it. It's just sitting there. So, excuse me, <clears throat> can't get my throat cleared. Heading into the end of the week, or even just heading into Friday, guys, the, the basic play here is an opening range break, period. I'm of the mindset that it breaks lower and tries to correct before it bounces, but again, you're not at resistance. So a tag of the parallel would be technically possibly a break of the highs, if we go for the 38.2 tag, that would be even higher, could fail there. Um, but the point being, it's a, a trade that was a little stretched as well. This one had, I think, a six-day rally, right? Um, one day interruption, and here we are making new highs again. So really big spot of where we turned, loved it, still love it. Um, but we haven't even tagged the median, the median line. So I can't get really excited about trying to fade it yet. And at the same time, it, what the heck kind of pullback is this? It's such a tight range. 
So a little frustrated with that. That just hasn't done anything per se, but we'll take when it when it gives. Can't press it. So talk about a snooze fest, right? After a nice ripper. So we're looking for clarity in, in Kiwi with a break of the weekly opening range. If it breaks lower, look for those lower parallels to possibly assert a nicer position. Um, I'd still be interested in possibly fading it into 64, 68, 64, 87. That's a big zone, the June low, 38.2 retracement, this zone right here. Nice pivot in price. Look how many lows it's caught. So if it does rip higher and I'm not in anything, I'd still be looking for exhaustion here. But as it stands right now, it's either the break lower. Uh, I guess you can try to play this short if it breaks the opening range with a, with a you know, responsible stop of some sorts. But from here, it's just a snooze fest until we clear this mini range. The last but not least of the majors is dollar CAD. And this was a beautiful play as well. Uh, still think you can't, you possibly get tagged at that, that 38 too. Look, the whole point of this one was that it was, again, a trade that we loved the reversal. We loved where it happened. We loved how it happened. We loved when it happened. Um, but you have to be cautious here. Uh, the bounce played into a nice big lateral level of support. And we'll, sh we'll show you a couple of different slopes that line up there as well. But here's the weekly chart. Basic 618, nothing fancy. Outside reversal off resistance last week. Ma beautiful play. Magnificent. This is your first bump. You could, see, you could see a little bit more of a swing higher, but all things held constant. Still looking for the broader trend lower. Okay? So we warned early into this week, look, look lower, but we're basically trading into the lower parallels. We're basically trading into a basic 38.2 retracement. You got the opening range highs for July. That was a decent pivot in price here. Caught the wicks, caught the wicks, no close below. Here's that 618. We closed in there two days ago. Yesterday did a nice bounce, and it still looked on divergence on the near-term chart. You could get a you know a little bit more of a push. Looking for failure soon, and then we're looking to be reassert. But the but the initial position right now is still for the for the rebound. Here's what the intraday chart looked like. Here's what it looked like again um, earlier in the week. This is the key support zone that we were looking at. You know, Friday's high came right at the median line. So it looked like 32.40 was a nice uh, spot. As we made the turn, tack on a retracement, it shows the 38.2 here at 22.29. And that converges on slope now. So a little bit slight adjustment as you get more confirmation that a low is in place. And certainly yesterday was a breach of the objective weekly opening range high. So you look at that Thursday, Friday high. Um, 32.29 looks like a good spot. You know, the median line is there. This slope, pretty nice, catching the lows, essentially. So look for a reaction there. Look for a reaction there. 32.46 is still like, I would still see if we get failure there, to be honest with you, even on an intraday spike. But l l largely speaking, I want to see what 32.29, 32.28 does. Remember, it's still a downslope, right? It's still a broader downtrend. We're playing this as if it's more corrective stance than anything. So just for argument's sake, I do want to see what this looks like. Hold on one sec. It's going to be much higher, but yeah, 3250s. I mean, great for now, but uh, I'd still look to dump here. Uh, maybe dump a little bit, or if not all of it here, and then look for reaction there. Stops get raised as soon as you get through 3228, because that's the first like major target on this rebound, at least. Questions on dollar CAD? Kicks that out a little bit, and again pushes the con pushes the convergence um, of the upper parallel right on that 32.47 level. Watch this. Stay constructive near term. About 31.91 uh, would be a nice spot. 
to designate support. All right, questions on dollar CAD. Uh, last but not least, let's just take a quick look at crude. Uh, you're getting a pretty big, uh, sizable move here, but I would just say uh, look for a uh, reaction just a little bit lower. Here's the pitchfork we've been following. And first of all, here's crude on the weekly charts. So don't forget that the ultimate picture here is that you were testing trend support, or excuse me, tr testing trend resistance last week. Uh, there was a confluence there, the 618 retracement from the drop too. So uh, this whole breakout here was, you know, needed to be validated essentially. And you're on pace right now to make a pretty big reversal candle um, with the low week close that we made back here in August at 54.23. We're testing that right now. Don't also forget is this momentum trigger, which just has been consolidating into a ridiculous, you know, typically in tech, uh, in tech analysis, when you're looking at price consolidations, just a kind of a rule of thumb is that they'll tend to, typically tend to break ahead of 10% from the apex. Uh, you're 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 more than more than there, than that than close there. So we're looking for some sort, if you know the same principles apply, um, some sort of validation here, right? So if price settles below 54.23 on a weekly close, and this thing breaks this thing on a weekly close below this parallel, or below this slope rather, uh, I'd be more inclined to look back at 51.60, 51. I don't know what everyone get, was getting super bullish about again, because even though this thing held support on pretty strong bounces, we never really broke any downslope resistance. And this is what we always talk about. If we're trying to take the other side of the trade instead of being a hero, uh, you always want to see that downtrend resistance break to to take the other side and on the other side of that trade upslope support to break. So here's um, here's crude on the on, on the daily. And I was reminded again that you know last month's opening range never really gave out. Here's the open of August. We slammed in support. It held. We stayed that whole range from that first five days, six days of trade, seven days of trade. And then the whole month stayed in that rally. This break here, yeah, probed through it, but guess what? We never materially closed above it. Here's the pullback. Watch out. Low day close for the month is also right here. Low day close for the week from August is also right here. Here's what the intraday chart looks like. Again, I'm not really a big fan. You know, 78, uh, 58, the 786 retracement, 5867 was supposed to be a soft target. Um, you know, I thought this was another buying opportunity to try to go for that launch towards 59. Nope, because downslope resistance was still in play. So the pivot below 5690 closed the deal. Obviously, we were broken the weekly open at this point. Um, you know, even if it recovers, I just don't want to mess with this thing. I think it needs to make a new low. That's my opinion. A new monthly low. That said, the upslope we've been following, this is support. This is support. So I'm all over the place on, on crude. I just don't like it. I think this is uh, treacherous territory here. If anything, I would love to see a bigger rebound to sell again. But do we get that bigger rebound first? We just got a pretty decent rebound for a whole 786 retracement of the, of the drop. And here we are again. So I feel like I missed the move. We should have been uh, a little bit more vigilant once we started breaking the weekly open, but there was not much to give us. So that's crude in a nutshell. Coming up on near-term upslope support, it's got to be a break and push below here to really get this thing going. Um, I'd say bearish below 56.61. And it's not very much help from where we are now, but we got a lot of different things on the menu. So if one thing uh, is a little uh, foggy, we'll stay aside from it at this point. Euro, by the way, is back above 109.80. Just a quick recap there. Watch this thing. This whole thing could be a fake out, guys, just to wash out the weak hands. This is the pivot that we need to see um, materialize. And the US Open just came online. so. If we proceed through, stabilize into the European Open above 
or 1990 rather this this monthly open objective zone I dismissed this whole drop okay uh, I gotta run uh, hope there are, if there are any other questions drop them on the message board now if not I hope you guys have a great weekend don't forget Jamie's on tap later this afternoon with the midweek strategy webinar uh, again nothing on tap tomorrow except retail sales so you know watch the US dollar price action most importantly into the close of the week Hope you guys have an awesome weekend, and I will see you on Monday morning for the free session on Daily FX, and right back here on SB on Tuesday and Thursday. Thanks, Pete, man. Appreciate it, guys. You too. Uh, have a great weekend. Cheers.